All right, good morning, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me okay, having a little audio issues um, with my computer. Um, but good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're very excited to highlight Pueblo High School. Um, they are Arizona FAFSA Challenge most innovative player for the month of January. Um, so we are highlighting them this month um, to highlight all of their great FAFSA completion efforts that they have put forth this year and in years prior. Um, they've consecutively achieved a 63% FAFSA completion rate or higher uh, since 2018. So even though the pandemic has hit, um, they're doing something very innovative to keep those FAFSA completion rates up. So we're here to learn all about that. And today we have with us uh, the College and Career Readiness Coordinator, Dr. Casey Richardson. And then we also have the Earn to Learn Near Peer Mentor, Jesse Robinson, who will be presenting on all the great things that they have been doing to promote FAFSA completion among their seniors. So we'll go ahead and hand it over to Dr. Richardson and Jesse. That way they can let us know about their great innovative efforts that they're doing. Thank you so much for that introduction, Julie. Yeah, so we're here today just to kind of um, share some of the things that we've been doing at our site in the hopes that that, of course, might be helpful to you all. Um, by no means do I consider myself an expert. There's a lot of help that we get um, through Jesse and through other folks, and I'll talk a bit more to that um, on another slide. But I just wanted to give you all, if I can get my screen to go here, just like a hot second during your busy days to take a breath, maybe like lower your shoulders for coming today. I know it's not easy to make time for these, um, but just to congratulate you all for being in the space, for doing all the work that you do this year. It has not been easy. Um, and just to say thank you for that. Um, in terms of our agenda, um, we're going to just kind of talk um, and Jesse will start us off with some of the college and career support that we have here at the high school. There's going to be a little interactive checkpoint for you all to just reflect on maybe some some things at your site that you've probably already thought through but maybe just getting a list going or thinking of something new might be helpful. Um, we'll share some of our efforts to date. We'll also provide you with one of the tools that we've been using which is our FAFSA tracker spreadsheet. Um, and Jesse will also explain that a bit. Um, and then we'll just have some time at the end for a little question and answer session if that's helpful for folks. I know Carla from Pima is gonna share some of her um, resources and upcoming events as well. So we'll have some time at the end for, for those discussions. All right, so I will let Jesse introduce himself. Okay, thank you, Casey, I appreciate it. And um, so my name is Jesse Robinson and um, I'm one of the near peer uh, student advisors with Earn to Learn, and uh, it's been a pr privilege to be able to work over at uh, Pueblo High School and be able to provide assistance there and assist Dr. Richardson. So um, what I do over at Pueblo High School is um, I assist with uh, FAFSA completion, um, anything with like uh, college applications, helping students to apply to colleges, helping students to find scholarships that may be uh, available to them that they may be eligible for. So that's another pri pri privilege you know, to be able to find scholarship for certain students, whether it's DACA students and or whether it's students with certain um, GPAs and things like that. But um, and I'm also able to help with um, SAT and ACT registration. And uh, another thing that I love doing at Pueblo High School um, that that I'm able to do is um, inform um, parents and well, families and students about um, FAFSA, FAFSA and any college going topics that um, they want to know about. So I'm, I, I'm thankful for the services that I'm able to do over at Pueblo High School, but um, it, it's been a lot of FAFSA. That's what I've been doing mostly over at Pueblo High School is um, um, assisting with FAFSA. And um, it's just um, a great opportunity to be there as uh, someone who can answer questions uh, that parents may have or that students may have just to make this process easier when it comes to um, college uh, readiness and, 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 um, uh, and, and career readiness. Thank you, Jesse. Um, so Jesse is one of one of our team. He's kind of a key component here who helps us with the FAFSA. Um, we do also have some students here at the high school that are helpful um, in terms of FAFSA and college um, readiness efforts that we have. Um, and they are kind of employed and volunteers and assisting us through different um, partnerships that we're part of. So. 
Um, Adriana and Belle, who are pictured here, are part of the College Knowing and Going partnership that we're taking part in. Um, they have quite a task list of things to do to network not only with seniors, but also with our juniors, sophomores, and freshmen, um, just to get students thinking about their after high school plans, um, preparing for things like the FAFSA, and just really raising awareness about all of those sorts of things. Um, and the other two students who are kind of assisting us in our efforts are Angelina and David. Um, they are my student aides during second period, um, and they also are tasked with helping folks with FAFSA, specifically more so with seniors. Um, with FAFSA, they've come into some classrooms with us and helped, um, and also just, again, promoting that, that knowledge about the financial aid, scholarship, and college application processes with their peers. Um, and as I mentioned at the very beginning, um, this is by no means just a me or just a me and Jesse effort here at the high school. Um, we're kind of the folks charged with spearheading things, and it is quite a daunting task with a senior class of over 400. Um, but we do have some really great community support. Um, I know there's some folks from Pima that are here today. Um, I found out after taking on this role in August that actually the person who had been our trio coordinator here at the high school now works at Pima and is has just absolutely been a great resource to us there. Um, so any financial or any FAFSA questions, I should say, that are kind of some unique family circumstances where neither myself or Jesse knows the answers to, I just send an email out um, to get that from someone who's more knowledgeable than myself. Um, we also have are part of a grant project with the University of Arizona um, through the College of Education, Project Outreach Familia. They've been great folks who have been um, on site to help with things, whether that's FAFSA or um, scholarship workshops like we had last week for some of our juniors. Um, we're also part of Gear Up that um, is predominantly um, with a point of contact at Northern Arizona University. They've got some great launch guides that include FAFSA and other college information for our students. Um, and we also, you know, much more unique to Pueblo High School, um, have connections with the Lap and Sunshine Foundation, um, which is a, an organization that's very much um, committed to the the middle school feeder students that come into this high school, helping them um, earn money uh, for their college and post-secondary plans and making sure that they have, um, that they're informed about uh, financial aid and college plans and anything else that might be of help to them. Um, in terms of our on-site support, in addition to those that we just showed on the, um, on the last slide, our AVID program here is really strong in terms of getting students to apply to the three in-state universities. Um, they also have some FAFSA discussions in their classes with students. So that's um, another point of support that we have. Um, so one thing you all might consider if you work at a high school is if there is an AVID program or if there's people who have that training, um, how you might be able to bridge, bridge your efforts together. Um, some of the most challenging work that I think Jesse and I do is really just communicating about the FAFSA, making sure that students understand what it is, why it's important, um, what materials they're gonna need to bring to be able to truly complete the FAFSA if they're able to. Um, and so some of the kind of um, resources we have here at the school that help with that is we have a wonderful film and TV teacher. So I've been trying to um, keep him informed about upcoming events we have, whether that's FAFSA or campus representatives who are here at the high school. So that way they can at least announce it in their videos that play every Friday or um, you know, do some kind of video around it so that students know what efforts are happening here at the high school. Um, the other kind of collaborator we have is the radio folks. They do a radio show, I think three, maybe four days out of the week. Um, that's pretty brief, but it is played in almost every class. So again, just making sure that they know about our upcoming um, 
events at the high school in terms of college and career. So that way students hear that, they get more familiar with that um, language, those upcoming events, et cetera. We also have the um, Pueblo College Preparatory Academy that's led by our current senior counselor um, who's been here for a number of years. She's just kind of a wealth of institutional knowledge and she does a really nice job of um, just making sure that the students who are enrolled in that preparatory academy with her are really aware of the different steps that they need to take to be prepared to go to, whether it's a community college, a four-year institution, an Ivy League, um, et cetera. Um, other communications that may or may not be the same at your site, um, our school has the presents the opportunity for students in each grade level to sign up for the Remind app, and they can get different notifications based off their graduating cohort year. Um, so when I encounter information or events or opportunities that are relevant for an entire grade level, I ask for that information to be sent out um, through a remind to the students directly. Um, and that has varying success, of course, because students have to opt in to that communication. They have to select to be part of that. Um, and a lot of students may not necessarily see the effort or the um, the impact or the rationale for doing that. So it, it's kind of um, also needing to recruit students when I meet with them to make sure that they're signed up to get those notifications. Um, and in terms of parent communication, I think that's definitely our area where we can improve the most here. Um, but we do have an option through um, parent link to send information to parents and families. Um, so upcoming FAFSA events and upcoming or FAFSA resources virtual that might be offered at different schools. Um, those can go out over parent link. Um, and given our demographics here at Pueblo High School, I do make sure that those are available in English and Spanish whenever possible. Um, and finally, um, these folks actually kind of share, share the wall with my office, but the Upward Bound folks just do wonderful work here at the high school. Um, I'm not sure if everyone else is able to get Upward Bound folks at their site, but I highly recommend ours. They're just really wonderful folks that work with our students in a in a one on one and small group setting to promote college knowledge, whether that be FAFSA or ACT preparation or whatever else, um, similar to TRIO at other sites, too. Um, so I just want to make sure that those folks were kind of given credit, but also in the case that you can kind of see if you have any of these folks at your schools or um, if you could build those connections and how they might be able to assist you in getting your getting your FAFSA completion rates up. So um, I did want to just give us a little time because as a teacher, I don't like don't like talking the whole time. I want to give you all some things to, to do and reflect on. And, you know, I know that many of you are probably very active in your FAFSA efforts. So some of this might be pretty easy for you. Um, but I just wanted to give you some things to maybe consider at your, at your own space. Um, so you might consider like who in your local community could maybe provide FAFSA support. Um, and for that, I'd really, um, you know, just recommend that you look into the institutions and resources that already exist. Of course, it helps to tailor things to your own site, but there's so many folks I've realized who are much more knowledgeable from their years in FAFSA um, efforts than I will ever be in my single year in this role that, you know, you can really um, make it perhaps a little easier on yourself to um, identify those in your community who, who are knowledgeable. Um, so you might consider checking out the college financial aid offices um, that are local to your school and seeing what kind of outreach that they already do. Um, and with that, I will share here in the chat. Um, this is something that you might look for um, in uh, the college websites that are close to your school. Um, this is one from Pima Community College. They actually have this outreach request form um, through their Office of Financial Aid and Scholarships that um, we've only actually filled out this form just once to have them come and help with things. But again, um, 
actually we've had the Pima folks answer a lot of questions uh, related to FAFSA that that I'm not able to answer. Um, so you might see if something like this exists at um, at an institution that's close to you. The other thing that you might consider is who at your site, who at your actual high school um, could or or college or um, another institution that might be here could maybe provide FAFSA support. Um, so you know, are there some college readiness comrades that you can build stronger relationships or build a relationship with to increase the staff, student, and family buy-in at your site for FAFSA completion and college readiness, and to also start to develop sustainable institution-wide plans. So maybe those are folks like the film and TV and radio folks that can help you just get the word out in, in um, delivery that your students are paying attention to, or maybe it's some actual like teachers on the grounds that have some FAFSA training from work they might have done previously. Um, the second to last question is how can you promote the importance of FAFSA and relevant resources? And with that, you know, what kind of makes sense of when you do that and where you do that? Um, initially, when I started this position, I was told, oh, well, you know, last year there was a there was a standing meeting every Thursday for families to do FAFSA at like 6 p.m. And I said, okay. But then I asked about, you know, what attendance was like and attendance wasn't really that great at those events. And so I wasn't willing to, um, you know, get home at 8 p.m. every day, every Thursday um, to do that. So I, I made things a little more logical for me and for our family's needs to book those appointments on an individual basis of when they needed to be like after contract hours to work with family schedules individually. Okay. Um, and the last thing, and I alluded to this earlier with some of our, um, our parent link information that we send to families, but, and this is also my, my background as a, um, a language scholar, but what languages should the information be presented in? Um, you know, does that depend on if it's an in-person versus an online meeting? Does it depend if it's a written email versus something that's audiovisual in a, you know, a YouTube video or something like that, flyers, et cetera. So I'll just give you all maybe like two or three minutes to kind of consider these questions. I'm sure many of you already have. Um, and while I do that, I'm just going to post one more resource in the chat that we have um, posted to our website that you might already have access to, but just so you have it. Um, and what I just posted in the chat by no means is this unique to our high school, um, but this is just something that I, I kind of swapped the information out for this current year. Um, so we have this kind of FAFSA fact sheet, common questions, um, both in Spanish with updated Pell Grant information um, and kind of this little worksheet here. Um, and then we also have it in English and that's just posted to our counseling webpage. Um, but if you don't already have something like this, um, this can be a really helpful resource just so that your, your families and your students know exactly the kinds of questions that they're going to get asked when they do complete the FAFSA. So again, I'll give you um, maybe one or two more minutes just to consider these questions back here and then we'll move ahead.
All righty. Yes, and definitely, as Julie just posted in the chat, if you have questions, um, I know none of this is necessarily that new, but just wanted to give you all some things to think about after we presented some of the stuff um, at our site. Um, two considerations that you might think about that have been pretty helpful on our end of things, um, depending on what role you're in at your, your site, if it's possible to have some student aides, um, and I would just caveat that with, you know, identify the student aides that are going to be truly helpful to you and that can take on this extra work. Um, but if you're able to um, have some student aides during a period, if you're at high school or, um, you know, some volunteers, some of my student aides have just been absolutely helpful in really um, promoting the FAFSA and helping students with college applications. And actually, one of the best things that they've done is they've just been a liaison between the students and me. Um, so students might feel more comfortable asking their peers questions, and then those questions will trickle to me through the student aides, and I can develop materials um, to address those questions and concerns. Um, my biggest thing that I have here is actually the kind of interpersonal side of things. And again, part of this is because my, um, my research and training is in, is in language and race. Um, but I just want to give some pointed questions because, again, we've had some wonderful help here, but sometimes the, um, the questions and, and interactions can be a little bit more nuanced to be more inclusive and I think more inviting of students to um, partake in these, these FAFSA efforts. And as many of us know, like if you're doing FAFSA for the first time, it's actually pretty daunting, um, especially if you don't necessarily have help the first time you're doing it. So to really try and just alleviate those anxieties, um, here's some kind of like language pivots that I would really strongly recommend. So we had a really large event that I'll um, explain a bit about on the next slide, I think, um, where we had, we had tens, if not hundreds of students coming in and the greeter was saying, have you completed the FAFSA? And that's a little tricky because it's either a yes, no. And when they say no, students might feel a little bit perhaps anxious, a little, a little low that they haven't done it. And maybe that's the expectation. And I just want to make sure that we're not putting undue pressure on students without support. The other reason that I wanted to change this language is because when we had this large event, it was in October. Okay. So we had barely even started the um, FAFSA communication with students because the FAFSA portal had just opened. So asking students, have you completed the FAFSA when they may or may not know what the FAFSA even is, was just kind of another, um, I think, point against us and against those um, what should be open conversations with students. The other thing that happens that I don't necessarily recommend is after this question was asked and the students were kind of like deer in the headlights and didn't know what was being asked of them, um, some folks from the community then, and they were lovely printouts, but they had like three different printouts that were multiple pages long, that were very text heavy, that they handed the students said, okay, here you go. And there just wasn't enough context, there wasn't enough explanation. Um, and I found that giving students these very lengthy documents it, it just doesn't work. They either throw them away, they get too anxious about it. it it's not best practice. So um, some suggestions. Um, what Jesse and I have talked about is framing these FAFSA pullouts. And this is more on a one-on-one -on -one basis when we meet with students um, or a small group basis even, framing it in terms of a check-in. Hey, and you know, this is at this point where now all the seniors know about FAFSA. But hey, we just wanted to check in about your FAFSA progress. Is there anything we can do to support you? Okay. Um, the other thing that we started to do even as early as last semester is just normalizing these conversations around social security numbers. And with that, not expecting that our students or that their families had a social security number. 
because for our demographics, some of them do not, and we do not want those students to feel excluded because they already are excluded and they can't fill out the FAFSA, okay? So one of the questions is just simply, oh, do you know if you have a social security number? Do you know what that number is? Um, if you don't know it, but that you know that you have a social security number, can you just call or text a family member real quick to get that information if anyone's home? And more so for our students, we do have some students that don't have social security numbers, and I'll explain in a second um, our policy there. Um, but really making sure that students know that it's absolutely like not a problem, not a disservice to us to take the extra step for completing the FAFSA when their parents or guardians don't have a social security number. So making sure that they know, you know, if mom or dad or whoever your guardian is doesn't have a social security number, that's totally fine. We can still complete the FAFSA for you. We just put zeros in the place of where their number might go and we just print an extra page. It's real easy. We'll help you do it, okay? Um, and so kind of related to just really trying to bring down all these like anxiety crossings we might have in, in having these FAFSA conversations and doing these FAFSA pullouts. Um, one of the biggest things, and, and Jesse and I can expand on this when we're sharing our, our spreadsheet tool with you all, um, but one of the biggest things that we run into is that actually a lot of our students think they've fully completed the FAFSA. Um, and it could be that they have, but it might also be that maybe their signature page didn't get processed yet, or they're, they're still missing something little, like they actually forgot to check the submit button. Um, so what our, pro our, um, our practice is when students come in, when we've pulled them for the FAFSA is, oh, okay, if, you know, you think you've done the FAFSA completely? Perfect, just log into the computer. We're just gonna check this page and make sure everything's done completely, just because we have to update our records. Just to make sure that students feel like they haven't done anything wrong. Um, and again, just so that we are on the same page about where they're at with the FAFSA and making sure that we can help them to fully complete the FAFSA, as we'll explain in just a second. Um, and this little bar is gonna cover things for me. Um, but just making sure that, um, again, in terms of the um, signature pages that we've had to print for students and for parents, um, a lot of times our students might not remember their IDs or sometimes it just doesn't work in the computer even though it worked at the beginning of their FAFSA application. So when we print the signature page for students, we just make sure to print it for them and to tell students, just bring it back to us and we'll mail it for you once you return it to us. Because again, we're just trying to limit all of these anxiety provoking aspects of completing the FAFSA. Um, one thing to consider, and this is probably because I am part of the counseling department here at the high school, there's this language about post-secondary plans. And I know I've used it here in this room because I expect that I'm here in a room with other educators. This is the craziest term, in my opinion, to use with students, post-secondary. We don't call high school secondary schools when we're just chatting with friends. So high schoolers will have absolutely no idea what that means. So I invite you all to just eliminate that from your vocabulary with students and just say, hey, you know, what are you thinking of doing after high school? It's just so much more clear and it just, I think, helps build a relationship with those students. Um, okay. Oops. Okay. Um, and finally, before we get into our spreadsheet that Jesse is going to share with us, um, I did just wanna share some of our efforts to date um, in case you have the opportunity to do something similar at your site. Um, so again, in terms of like connecting with students, we just made an Instagram channel. Um, I don't actually have Instagram. The, the um, student ambassadors, Adriana and Belle just post what I send them. Because if I were to adopt an Instagram, I would just be on there for hours a day and I don't have that kind of time. 
Um, so posting things like FAFSA or scholarship or workshop opportunities on there, making sure that students know about that channel um, and can follow it because there might already be on Instagram anyways. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the large event that we had in October where um, we had a lot of students kind of come for their first discussions related to FAFSA, it was actually a date that was um, scheduled for testing the freshmen through juniors for like benchmark testing. So if you ever hear about those dates where basically your freshmen, sophomore, and juniors, or even just one of those cohorts is going to be occupied and you're going to have staff um, involved in that benchmark testing, advocate to have kind of a senior day rotation where they complete some of their requirements for graduation. So some of ours were like the CPR um, training, the civics exam, and we also had FAFSA. So it was really, um, it was a great first interaction with a lot of students. We didn't have enough rooms reserved because admin just wasn't expecting um, as many seniors as we got. But if you can budget staff, budget rooms, budget computers to that sort of thing during a day where other grade levels are occupied doing something else, it can be a really nice way to um, just capture a lot of students. Um, Jesse and I, in combination with the um, peer advisors from MEC, We've done multiple meetings with each of the senior English classes. Um, so we, we scheduled with each of the senior English teachers and had two days of visits with them about the FAFSA. And most of the students, I would say during that time, at least got started with the FAFSA. Um, but of course, if students didn't come prepared with the 2020 taxes and the month and year in which their mother got divorced from their dad and all those kind of particulars that show up in the FAFSA, we needed to do follow-ups with those students in these um, kind of individual pull-out sessions where we just call out students from an appropriate class. Um, as I pull up the FAFSA spreadsheet, so you can kind of see the one of the tools we created that we're working with, um, just as a final note, kind of to touch back on any students who may not be able to do the FAFSA because they don't have a social security or an alien registration number, um, many of you probably already know about this organization, Scholarships AZ. Um, they also put on a wonderful workshop, Immigrant Scholarship Hustle, in the fall. Um, I highly, highly recommend them. They have a web page of um, scholarships that are open to DACA and undocumented students listed by um, month in which they're due, I think, or maybe in which they're open. Um, but they're a wonderful resource. So. Scholarships AZ. And finally, I will stop talking, which is lovely. And then um, I'm going to let Jesse talk about this spreadsheet right here that we, this is kind of a template for use that I'll share in the chat in case you want to do something similar. Um, I don't know if you can edit this one directly, but what you can do is at the top, go to file and just make a copy for yourself if that's helpful. Um, and so I'll put that here in the chat and then I will move over to the actual spreadsheet so that Jesse can kind of talk us through it. All righty. So um, Casey, do you think I should just pull up the spreadsheet from my screen? Would that be better if I can do that? If you want, otherwise I can just let me know where you want to go and I can move over to it. Okay, let me see if it, this will start. Okay, let me see if I can pull, up, pull it up from my screen really fast, Casey. Julie, do you know if Jesse has permissions to share screen? Yes, you should be able to. You may need to stop sharing on your end, Casey, first, and then it should allow uh, Jesse to share. Okay. 
Okay. Well, yeah, it's giving me a difficult time. So Casey, yeah, it'll yeah, if you can just sit, um, yeah, go to it from your screen, that would probably be best. But it looks a little different from it looks a little different here from on my end from from the sheet that we've been using. But um, yes, uh, so this spreadsheet um, it's, it's it's been great to use. Um, I would say uh, one big thing that helped uh, was um, those events that we had at Pueblo High School that uh, um, Casey put together and meeting and uh, with those English classes and helping them to better understand um, things about the FAFSA. And, 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 and why it's important and that it's um, that um, seniors are required to complete um, their FAFSA application um, in order to walk at their graduation. I feel like that was very important in helping students to get started with um, completing the FAFSA. So this is why, so, so based off of those events, it made it easier for us to use this spreadsheet and um, know that students have got, have, um, got started with the FAFSA. Um, so, We've been using um, fast for finish line data, and I think Julie, you, I watched your video on the fast for finish line data, and also there is, um, I also had a training um, for the fast for finish for fast for finish line data through fast for boot camp. So as an earn to learn peer advisor, I received uh, a lot of trainings for um, fast for finish line data. So we ended up using a fast for finish line data, and that made it that made things a lot easier as far as helping students to uh, complete their FAFSA. So um, what happens is um, uh, like Casey can upload um, the senior list of all the seniors at uh, Pueblo High School and we can see their status on their FAFSA application, whether they're incomplete, whether they're complete, whether, whether they have completed a FAFSA, whether they're missing a signature or um, whether they're selected for uh, verification. So um, Casey, is this the right spreadsheet we've been using? It looks a little different on my end. Yeah, my apologies, Jesse. So I, I just made a template that didn't have our student information. Oh, okay, I got it. With yeah. folks okay. For today. So some of the columns might be in slightly different orders as a okay. result. Yeah. So um, basically, let me um, just check for really, okay. One second. So basically, uh, I, I love this list because we're able to see the student's uh, uh, last name, the student's first name, and we're able to see the uh, student's FAFSA status. So we organize um, based off, uh, if you can look at column C, we'll, we, we're able to see a student's uh, um, FAFSA status in, in column C. So the students who have, a, who have completed the FAFSA, if we look at their FAFSA and see that they're complete, um, we don't really uh, focus on pulling them from class or anything. So we just go after the uh, missing signatures and ones. So we, we just uh, go after my, my um, let me plug in my uh, charger really quick. My computer is about to die. So I'm gonna plug that in really fast, but. But yeah, well, we check the FAFSA status, and and uh, if if, the, if a student has a missing signature, then um, we, what we did was we, uh, uh, with the help of Dr. Richardson, uh, I was able to go into our uh, Synergy database, and um, I was able to look up students' second and third period classes, and uh, sometimes I, I may do their fifth, look at their fifth period class to see when the best time to pull the students um, to come talk to me about. Um, their, uh, about their FAFSA status. So if I see a um, incomplete or, or missing signature, I wanted to go to those first because it seemed like those would be the easiest to um, those would be the easiest uh, to address. So um, if the, if there was a missing signature in column C, I would go I would look there and I would look up the students and on a spreadsheet I also included the students second and third period classes to see which students, uh, which classes would be best to pull students from, whether it's a Spanish class or if it's, if it's a class like that. And uh, what I would do is just put, the, that would make it easier to put together call slips so that we can um, call, we, so that we can pull students for class to talk about the FAFSA. Like, hey, only thing that you're missing on a FAFSA is a missing signature. Um, can you log in? Can you log in really fast? And um, we'll see what you need to do. If you have your social security number, you can sign your FAFSA electronically. If you don't, um, uh, if, if you're missing a parent signature and your parent doesn't have a social security number, we may have to print the signature page. And as Casey said, um, the student can bring the signature page back to our office where um, uh, we can mail that 
um, to um, the address in Kentucky uh, so that um, so that um, their um, so that they submit um, their signature page. Um, also, so so after after um, we uh, help the student to submit their signature page, we there is also a section where we that you can see in column I that says signature submitted uh, online or paper. So we we are able to. Um, we're able to um, update that information in our spreadsheet. So we're able to say, hey, um, on um, February uh, 22nd, we helped, um, whether it's Esmeralda, we helped her submit her signature page. So we're able to um, update that information. And, um, and, 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 we, and, that, and, and that's great because we'll know that we met with that person, that person su uh, submitted their signature page. And around a time where the next FAFSA finish line data is available, we'll be able to see that it's updated, hopefully, and that um, that student we won't have to pull again unless we're talking about other things that we included on the spreadsheet. So we also, when meeting with, this, when meeting with students, I feel like about FAFSA, and, 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 and helping them to complete their FAFSA. I think this goes, the other, um, the other column headers that, that we have here, I think it goes hand in hand with, the, with FAFSA. It makes it a lot easier. You know, um, I know we were interested in what students were um, looking to do after high school. So we also included in a second, we, we also included that in the spreadsheet as well that we can go to and that we can ask students when we're meeting with them because it goes hand in hand. In hand. So if you look at column L, it says um, post-secondary plan. So when we're meeting with students, um, in order for students to receive an award letter or know how much they will receive in financial aid, they need to apply to schools. And that's why I thought that was a good thing to include on this spreadsheet. It's like, hey, what school are you um, interested in attending maybe? Um, you know you have to apply to that school in order, to, in order for you to see how much money that, or, or how much uh, financial aid you will receive. So it goes hand to hand, the conversation, the conversation is uh, pretty much normal. Just, hey, what, what, what school are you interested in attending? You have to apply to that school. And we also have um, uh, the, app, the admission applications due, due date in their, their uh, admission application status. So um, when, we, when we see what college they're interested in attending, we're also able to see, hey, when, when is the application due so that they can make sure, so that we can see if they need any help completing the application so that um, everything can, everything, so that everything can go well, so that we make sure that they are applying to the school as well, so that they can make sure that they receive their award letter. Um, when it comes to applying for uh, financial aid as well, um, a big thing about knowing what school that the student is interesting in a, interested in attending is um, they may want to uh, attend U of A, but there's certain, but but for U of A, in order to, for them to receive maybe different, some type of state aid, they may have to have their FAFSA completed by like January 31st, and they may have to apply to like U of A by January 31st in order to, to be eligible for uh, those type, those different types of aid that are offered at the school. Maybe Arizona Promise, I don't know if they have to have everything complete by um, April 1st, but we just want to make sure that they're not missing out on those opportunities. So I think that was very helpful. I mean, that was very uh, important to include in this spreadsheet, just in case, you know, once we know students are interested in uh, applying to whether it's ASU, Pima, we're able to also, when we're meeting for FAFSA, uh, we're able to tell them like, hey, um, you know, in order to receive the Arizona Promise, you know, you have to have this FAFSA application completed by, you know, maybe it's April 1st. Or uh, if students are interested in attending Pima, once we know that by meeting with the students for FAFSA, we're able to maybe say, hey, you know that you're interested in attending Pima, there's the Earn to Learn scholarship that you may be eligible for. So once we know what school a student is in, uh, interested in attending, not only can we help them to know, uh, get their FAFSA in and, and motivate them and encourage them to get the FAFSA in as soon as possible so that they can receive different types of uh, state aid that they may not have, have to actually come out of pocket to attend like universities such as the University of Arizona, but we're also able to um, see we're also able to inform them about other um, scholarships that they may be eligible for as well. So I, that's one, uh, another one of the biggest things about it that I love about this is that we're able to inform them about so many other different scholarship and funding opportunities. And another thing, maybe in column Q that we may add is their GPA. So if we add their GPA in column Q, 
we may be able to say, hey, you may be at, like when we meet with students, we're able to just make sure that they're informed about every funding opportunity available and the importance of getting the FAFSA in as soon as possible. Um, we also have um, the follow up needed for admissions application and we have the follow up needed for FAFSA. So I like when we have our FAFSA status um, column and then we have the um, type of FAFSA uh, follow up needed. So whenever we meet with a student, we may only meet for let's just say 30 seconds because that may be only I'm mean, at 30 minutes because that may be um, all the time that the student has for that day we're able to update and say hey we left off on a parent section or the the, the students the student may say hey I'll bring my bring that my parent um, my parents income information on mo next Monday so I'll so we can update that and say hey next Monday meet with Meet, meet, meet with Matthew on next, next Monday to help him with, uh, uh, to pick up where we left off on the parent uh, income information. So we're able, to, we're able to update that, see where we left off. Um, maybe we left off um, with um, submitting the signature page and mailing that off. We're able to always update that so we can see that. So it's, it's very particular, very specific, and it's, 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 very, it's accurate. We're able to see, um, um, where, where we left off with the student and what we can follow up with. And, and the same thing, um, we may need to follow up about a missions application. Maybe a student didn't get around to applying to Pima. So, it, so we can continue to follow up with the student to make sure that, you know, they're picking up where they left off and that they're getting their admissions application in or, or, or rather it's, um, you know, picking up on the parent section if that's where they left off as well um, or, or wherever they left off. Um, as long as we're updating their FAFSA status, where they are, um, what documents that they may need, or, or what may have prevented them from um, completing the FAFSA. Like a student told me um, um, this early on this week, my mom's not comfortable for, um, with um, giving out my social security number and that type of information. So can I meet with you? And my, can, can you meet with me and my mother on Wednesday? So I put that, I put that there, of like, I put that in, uh, under column K, for example, hey, I'm going to meet with Julian next Monday. Julian and his mother, and on, on well next Wednesday, and we're going we're going to uh, begin the FAFSA together. Um, let's see if there's yeah. anything else. Also, yeah. selected for verification, we have that there, so we can inform students about that. If they're selected for verification, we can look uh, we can look at um, column O. We can scroll over to column O, and we can see if a student selected for verification, so we can inform them of what they need to do in order um, to solve uh, um, any issues that are or any um, requests for um, documents and things like that for verification. Yeah, and I was just going to add just two quick points, Jesse, because I think some folks have some questions that we might want to leave a little time for. Um, but one of the things we have on here in this final column is preferred email address. Um, I don't know if folks at other sites have the same problem, but our students really aren't in the habit yet of checking their TUSD email account. So sometimes, even though it makes a little bit more work for us, just knowing what personal email they use and what they get on their phone is really to our benefit for all of these follow-ups. Um, and just to come back to this earlier portion of kind of the tracker here, we do at our high school have a lot of students that show as partial matches. Um, so, you know, this isn't necessarily a column that will be filled out for every student, but for those that are partial matches, just for us to figure out why that is. And most of ours are either um, an additional last name or one last name fewer than what's on their student report on Synergy, um, or it could be that they've moved and have a different zip code. Um, the last thing I was just going to touch on here is that um, we use this spreadsheet, as Jesse was saying, we started with the um, partial matches and some of the incompletes that were just missing signatures. So we sorted the sheet based off FAFSA status to kind of prioritize our meetings with students. Um, but I think just for the purposes of time, I, I know that you all have um, <laughs> a very busy day ahead and you've already put in many hours of work, but I do want to just leave some time for questions. I put this image up just because um, of recognizing the work that you all do to get the FAFSAs completed at your schools. I feel like I will look like this woman before May 24th when we're out of here, um, but just to keep up the good work and keep up the efforts. Um, because it really does make a difference. So thank you all for being here. And I think, Julie, we've got about five or so minutes for questions. 
Yes, um, first of all, thank you, Dr. Richardson and Jesse for this valuable information. I love the spreadsheet, being able to track all that information for students, um, following up with appointments. Um, if anybody has any questions, I know we had a couple come through during the presentation that were answered, um, but if you have any additional questions on any materials that they went over or any um, items that you just may want to ask that wasn't covered, uh, feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, I believe everyone is still muted right now just for background noise, um, but we'll definitely get to them. And then Dr. Richardson uh, put in her email and Jesse's email as well. So if you want to follow up with them on any items um, that they chatted about, they gave a lot of great tips and resources. Um, I think the spreadsheet is a great takeaway that if everybody can adapt, that'd be great and kind of make it your own just to be able to have a summary of that conversation that you had with each student that Jesse was talking about. I love being able to capture all that information. Um, so let's see here. So there is uh, just, you know, kind of one question. Um, that I have, you, you mentioned a lot of partners that you have as far as helping with FAFSA completion. Um, do you find that these partners are, are helpful? Do you find that there are, you know, everybody kind of has an idea of, you know, helping students with FAFSA completion, helping them with college applications. Um, do you think the more partnerships, the better? Do you recommend that, you know, schools reach out to these various you know, universities and community colleges for assistance? Or do you think it's better just to have one primary partnership um, or many just to kind of, it takes a village kind of a, you know, motto? Just curious on your input. Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, since I'm new to this role, I don't know that I've, um, I, I've enacted an, a stance on that just yet. I think um, I'm just so grateful for all of the different help that we do have available. Um, typically what I've found is that my, my resource at Pima just tends to be the most knowledgeable and have had the most years experience. So when I get those tricky questions for individual student circumstances, um, I generally defer to him on that to make sure um, that I'm giving students the right information. And then Jesse and I kind of share whatever that response is. So we know, <clears throat> excuse me, how to move ahead. Um, and in terms of the kind of student partnerships, obviously Jesse's here and, and he's wonderful, but he's an adult. <laughs> um, but in terms of the student partnerships, uh, my recommendation would just be um, if you do adopt any of those student partnerships, whether that's CKG or, or Metropolitan Education Commission, um, to kind of vet those students towards the end of this year, you know, whatever juniors you have that you might get recommended from a counselor or from programs like Upward Bound or TRIO that are kind of already on a college readiness path. Um, and just to make sure that they can really um, commit to those extra tasks, that they have know how to manage their time and that sort of thing. Because what I've realized for both of our, um, our, both of our students and both of those partnerships, it is quite a lot of extra work for them. And so just making sure that they understand that and can navigate it. Perfect. And you had mentioned Pima, and I know we have Carla um, mm -hmm. as a participant. So Carla, I'm going to go ahead and um, unmute you here. So Carla, I'd love to hear any updates. Um, I believe you're going to give with Pima. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, thank you. Um, we, Pima Community College, um, the Office of Financial Aid and Scholarships, we are hosting some FAFSA events on campus um, to help students complete the FAFSA. And so we have uh, three more events scheduled for the spring semester, and I'll be happy to share um, just really quick our events uh, website. Um, I'll share it on this chat here really quick. Um, I think that goes to everybody. Um, but we do have our upcoming event on March, um, Saturday, March 5th at the West Campus. We will be there from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Doesn't mean you have to be there the entire time. You can just come in, take care of business, and be on your way. Um, we are more than happy to, to assist you um, come along with your parents. We just do ask for registration so that we can um, make sure that we have ample space for everybody and also um, consideration for, for uh, distancing, social distancing. But, um, and then we have a few other events on Friday, uh, April 1st at the Northwest campus. 
Um, that one is an afternoon event from 4 to 6 p.m. And then lastly, on Saturday, May 7th, um, at the downtown campus from 12, uh, I'm sorry, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. as well. And um, I'm happy to share with Julie, uh, maybe she can share out with the group uh, a um, in addition to the link, um, we do have some flyers that have the direct uh, registration link if, if um, you'd like to share with your students. I know sometimes uh, parents aren't available um, during class times, um, so it's nice to be able to bring the parents along. So we do have that. And then um, in addition, uh, collaborating with our Metropolitan Education Center here in the Tucson area, we will be coming up with uh, providing some additional workshops. And I'm not sure if anyone's on the line from MEC, but um, I know that they will be providing some additional FAFSA workshops, scholarship workshops, um, also resume, like uh, job preparation type skill workshops as well. And so we're those dates are being finalized, um, but we're co-collaborating with them as well. And um, also last but not least, I know you just asked about the FAFSA events, but we also have our uh, a section dedicated on our scholarship page on Pima for um, DACA or undocumented students. Um, so I'm happy to share, we do include the scholarships AZ, but there's additional resources out there for, for students to, to be able to look at and um, our scholarships as well. Uh, our Pima Foundation scholarships are open for students um, without a, uh, uh, that are undocumented as well. So um, we're, I'm, I'll go ahead and share that with everyone. Um, sorry, I know we're coming um, to the end of our time here, but really quick. Thank you so much, Carla. And if you want to email them to me, I can share it out with the attendees um, in case everyone's not catching it in the chat. Um, that way you have all of them there. Um, so happy to share those out for any Tucson area folks um, who want to go there or anyone who's planning to go into Pima or, or just really any resources. Um, Pima is a great resource and Carla and her team are great. And obviously we know they partner with Pueblo High School very closely um, and you can see the results there. So definitely want to thank Dr. Richland again and Jesse. You guys make an amazing team. We're so happy that you guys were able to um, put on this presentation for us and share all these great FAFSA best practices that you're doing. Um, um, you guys are doing an amazing job and are already ahead from last year in what you're doing. Um, so very excited uh, to award you guys, you know, with our FAFSA Challenge Most Innovative Winner. Um, so definitely congratulations on that. Um, and then if there's any additional information that you want to share, um, feel free. Um, but other than that, I think that we're all set. And thank you all for attending today. And I'll go ahead and send an email out with the recording so you can share with any of your colleagues or go back and review the information. We'll also share a copy of the presentation as a PDF as well. And then um, the information that Carla shared um, on the PIMA events. Um, so tons of information is coming your way. Um, I'll send that out uh, by the end of the day today. But thank you all for joining and we look forward to our next webinar, which will be scheduled for March. So stay tuned for that date and the high school will be featuring. Thank you all.